Let's go into the world, and I would like to ask you to stand up with me, and uh, and I will ask Sister Sarah to come and read. It's a little bit longer reading, but um, please pay attention what God is speaking to the people of Israel. God's word. Thus says the Lord, where is your mother's certificate of divorce? with which I sent her way, her away, or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities you were sold, and for your transgressions your mother was sent away. Why, when I came, was there no man? Why, when I called, was there no one to answer? Is my hand shortened that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, by my rebuke I dry up the sea, I make the rivers a desert, their fish stink for lack of water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness and make sackcloth their covering. The Lord has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the, God, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in the darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. Behold, all you who kindle a fire, who equip yourselves with burning torches, walk by the light of your fire and by the torches that you have kindled. This you have from my hand. You shall lie down in torment. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion, he comforts all her waste places, and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness would be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the people. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. Listen to me, you who know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear not the reproach of man, nor be dismayed at their rivalings. revelings. For the moth will eat them up like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will be forever, and my salvation to all generations. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in days of old, the generations of long ago, was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces, who pierced the dragon? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to pass over? And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I, I am he who comforts you. Who are you that you are afraid of man who dies? of the Son of Man who is made like grass and have forgotten the Lord, your Maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, and you fear continually all the day because of the wrath of the oppressor, when he sets himself to destroy? And where is the wrath of the oppressor? He who is bowed down shall speedily be released. He shall not die and go down to the pit, neither shall his bread be lacking. I am the Lord your God who stirs up the sea so that it waves, its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. 
And I have put my words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand, establishing the heavens and laying the foundations of the earth and saying to Zion, you are my people. Wake yourself, wake yourself, stand up, O Jerusalem. You who have drunk from the hand of the Lord, the cup of his wrath, who have drunk to the dregs, the bowl, the cup of staggering. There is none to guide her among all the sons she has borne. There is none to take her by the hand among all the sons she has brought up. These two things have happened to you. Who will console you? Devastation and destruction, famine and sword. Who will comfort you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of every street like an antelope in a net. They are full of the wrath of the Lord, the rebuke of your God. Therefore, hear this, you who are afflicted, who are drunk, but not with wine. Thus says your Lord, the Lord, your God, who pleads the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken from your hand the cup of staggering, the bowl of my wrath you shall drink no more, and I will put it into the hand of your tormentors, who have said to you, bow down that we may pass over. And you have made your back like the ground, and like the street for them to pass over. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion, put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for there shall no more come into you the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake yourself from the dust and arise. Be seated, O Jerusalem. Loose the bonds from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus says the Lord, you were sold for nothing and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, my people went down at the first into Egypt to sojourn there and the Assyrian oppressed them for nothing. Now, therefore, what have I here, declares the Lord, seeing that my people are taken away for nothing Their rulers wail, declares the Lord, and continually all the day my name is despised. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, in that day, they shall know that it is I who speak. Here I am. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together in singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Purify yourselves, you who bear the vessels of the Lord. For you shall not go out in haste, and you shall not go out in flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. The word of the God of God for the people of God. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are praying that you will speak to us through your word. We're praying this in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This is an amazing word for the people of Israel and people of Judah. Uh, they were, uh, when Prophet uh, Isaiah was prophesizing that, the Assyrians already took uh, people of Israel in captives. Later on, the people of Babylon will destroy will destroyed the, 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 the Jerusalem and the temple. And, uh, and, and, and slowly, Prophet Isaiah is trying to make some good introduction. Who is that servant of the Lord? And last time, Roger was talking about that, that, that servant of the Lord is serving. It's announced by, by the Prophet Isaiah. Now we will go through the why teaching of the servant of the Lord, uh, servant of the God is very important. And next Sunday, we will go through the topic, suffering servant of the Lord. And uh, slowly Isaiah is picturing, is pointing toward that, that God is sending salvation, redemption for the people of Israel and people of Judah, but God is sending eternal redemption, internal salvation through his servant, through Messiah who will suffer not for his sins, but for the sins of the world. And we will go that next Sunday and we will have one young preacher from Novi Sad who will come and serve here with us. In these two chapters, there is a lot of good topics here. 
And, 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 and what I can uh, see here is that God is very patient with the people of Israel. God is very patient with us. Yes? <laughs> uh, sometimes I say God has a flat forehead in heaven. When he see me, he always... Oh, <laughs> oh, again. <laughs> and, uh, and we see that God, from one side, he's very loving, kind, good, patient God. But also God is very serious God. And uh, if we don't listen to him, uh, we will put ourselves in a bad position under his judgment. And people of Israel didn't listen to God. They, God chose them for the plan of salvation. He revealed himself through his commandments. God uh, revealed themselves as a God of Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob. They knew everything. But they sometimes went astray. They start to practice worshiping other I idols, what God forbidden to them. In the beginning of uh, this chapter 50, uh, he's again and again reminding them. And, 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 and uh, through the book of the Bi uh, Isaiah and all Bible, God is always reminding his people where they have been and why things happen in their life. Because sometimes we are easy to forget. Yes, we are easy to forget what happened. And God wants us to remind us where we have been and why we are in some situation and who created that consequences in our situation. Because sometimes people are very fast to accuse God instead of watching in themselves. Yeah. And, and, and then in, 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 in this, in this first verses in the chapter 50, he's asking them like, uh, why, uh, like he's talking about their loving relationship between God and uh, Israel, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like a marriage. And he said, why I release you? Why you left you? Uh, why, uh, um, uh, because of what happened, uh, to, to you, it's not because of me, but because of your sins. And he's very clear, he said. He said, I, um, uh, uh, he said, it's not a question that I'm not powerful and strong to save you. Is that because of your sins you were sold? Because of your transgression, you, your mother was sent away. In, 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 in good picture, he's want to remind them and tell them, we lost our relationship because of your sins. Humans lost relationship with God because we choose to be our gods ourselves. We turn back from God and we lost our contact. We lost communication. We lost this relationship with a loving creator, with a loving God, with a loving father. And that's the bad news. But the good news is that God wants to restore that relationship. One brother from our church here, he likes when I give illustration that we lost Wi-Fi. We lost our network. <laughs> we lost our network and then God want to bring us back, uh, but he needs to pay the price for our sins. He needs to restore that relationship. And, and in this chapter, he is talking how he will restore relationship with the people of Israel. But also in this chapter is prophecy. It's a word of God. Good news promises that this salvation that he is providing for them, not only that they can come back in Israel, in Jerusalem, that fulfilled, but that God is provi providing internal salvation for the all nations in the world. There is possibility that we can come back to God because God did that for us through his Messiah, through his servant, Jesus Christ. God is powerful to restore. He said, and, and what is very interesting, he said, when I was speaking, nobody was there. When I was come there, nobody, uh, when I called, why nobody answered? And God was very patient. He was sending prof prophet by prophet to them to remind them, hey, come back, come back. And, uh, and, uh, and they didn't respond. And sometimes we can put ourselves in that situation. Some, sometimes God is sending to you good sermon. God is sending to you a good book. God is sending to you some good opportunity. And sometimes we don't respond on God's grace and God's mercy toward us. God wants to restore relationship. And we will see that through his servant, which is coming, through his suffering servant, Jesus Christ. And he is uh, uh, inviting people of God to trust him and to believe in his words and his promises. 
In, in, in chapter 50, he paint a little bit. Uh, in chapter 53 will be more. Uh, God's servant uh, is teachable. He is obedient to the God's word. As a God's prime, uh, God's servant, Israel were not listening to God's word. Were not listening what God wanted. We didn't put on obedience. They did. They were not obedient to the God's word. But the new servant, which is coming, Messiah Jesus, he is listening. He said, "I open my ear. I put. Uh, uh, I'm humble, and I put uh, uh, in the verse four and said." He said, the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructing tongue to know the world that sustains the weary. He wakened me in the morning by morning, waking me to listen the one who had been instructed. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. And then he's talking about his suffering. He said, I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I didn't not hide my face from mocking and spitting. That happened to Jesus. He's prophesizing 700 years before that this will happen to the suffering, suffering Messiah. And he knows that God's servant, that God is with him, that God will vindicate him and help him. But through these two chapters, we are learning that God is very patient. He's teaching his people. He's teaching his people through different ways. We can read in, a, in, a, in, a, in two chapters, 51 and 52, he's teaching his people, reminding them about who is he. He is a creator through, his, through the nature. He's teaching them through the nature. God revealed himself through the nature, through his creation. Romans 1 said that everything what we can know about God, we can find through the God's creation. Apostle Paul said that. Uh, he's teaching that he's God's, that's power, that he's powerful creator and that he's the Lord of universe. But also he's teaching them through the history, through their history. He's remember, re, remembering them, reminding them about Abraham. He said, you remember Abraham was only one <laughs> and Sarah, but now you see you're a great nation. He's reminding them also and teaching them about what God did miracles in Egypt. He's using that illustration. And, and, and also he's teaching them through his servants. I mentioned through his servant. I mentioned that through Messiah. But he's teaching them through his word to them. God revealed himself clearly through his word to them. God is revealing today as well. When, when I'm talking with people, they said, oh, I'm not sure there is a God. But when you see the universe, how it's tu perfectly tuned, when you see the history of, uh, of people of Israel, uh, when you see that God revealed himself through the Bible, Bible is a, like ID card of God. We can know who is he, what is his characters. Well, how, what happened to the humans? Why there is evil of the world? What is the solution? But God fully, uh, fully presentation to the humans is through the human, through the man. God revealed himself to the, to the man and God became a man. He came on our standards that we can see, understand him. And he came here to serve us, to pay the ransom for our sins. And we can see that, that, that through these two, two and a half chapters, he's using the word instructions. Instruction, he said, and it's very, he's very carefully explaining here in chapter 51, 7 and 8. He said, this is a new law instruction that I'm, that I'm giving to you. It's coming from me. It's coming from me. Then he said, you need to take this instruction to your heart. Then uh, uh, the, the word of the servant needs to take seriously. And, uh, and I will read that uh, word, uh, verse later. He's talking about that, that this instruction will be the light of the nations. He said, you can accept that instructions from me. And this can be a light for your life. But you can create your own lights. He's mentioning that as well. You can create your own torches to lead you. And you can be satisfied by yourself, but the end you will punish because of that. You will, the, the end is destruction. You can listen God, or you can think you can listen yourself. You can be satisfied that you need yourself for everything. 
this word that God is proclaiming uh, uh, will proclaim eternal righteousness, the way how we can stand right in front of God, internal salvation, internal hope, internal redemption for all nation. God is trustworthy and faithful, and we need to take seriously his word. This word will also be a good comfort and refreshment for believers. This word that he is giving to them will bring them a special joy, gladness, hope in the midst of hard situation in, uh, in exile. This word also that he is giving to them is warning to the people what will happen to them if they don't want to listen to him. And he is reminding them through the word what happened to them and why God showed the judgment, why God gave them a cup of his wrath to them because they were disobedient to the, his word. Basically, when we read in this text, in this two and a half chapter, we can see that good word, God's word is a good news. It's a good news for the people of Israel. They will be set free. God is promising them a hope. God is promising them a new time. And many times in this text, he said, awake, wake up, stand up, <laughs> stand strong. Don't uh, shake the dust. He's using the word shake the dust and go, go toward Jerusalem. Freedom is coming. God provided salvation. Comfort and freedom are coming. He's calling for the new relationship. Uh, uh, he's calling God's people to be holy. He said, prepare yourself in the fifth chapter 52. He said, prepare yourself, be holy uh, uh, toward going, to, go, going toward Jerusalem, toward the new relationship. He's also promising them on the end of the verse of the chapter 42, verse 13. He said, and this time I will be with you and I will go in front of you and I will go behind you. God's presence will we with them and it's a good 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 promises and he said and not only that but go and tell this good news from the mountains blessed are the feet who are pronouncing the good news and and apostle paul quote that text in in in, in roman romans chapter chapter 10 and um, he's uh he's uh, like uh, uh, reminding them and this is a good reminding for ourselves that we can be serious and take God's word serious. I will read 52, 1 and 2. Awake, awake, Zion. Close yourself in a with a new strength. Put on yourself garments of splendor. Jerusalem, the holy city. The uncircumcised and defied will not enter uh, will not enter you again. Shake off your dust. Raise up. Sin and throne Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck, daughter of Zion, now captive. For this is what the Lord say. You were sold for nothing and without money you will be redeemed. He is continuing in a, in a, in a, in a, in a verse 7 to 10. He said, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who will bring the good news, who proclaim peace, who bring the good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, Your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it is with their own eyes. Burst into the songs of joy together. Your you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of the all nations, and the, all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Amen. Jesus Christ died in Jerusalem. God provided salvation and redemption for the whole world. We can see in these two chapters, God is reminding them and tell them, hey, I know you, you, you messed up. You deserve what, what you deserve, but I'm giving you good news. I'm giving you good opportunities. You can get out, take off things from your neck, neck, shake the dust and walk. And I just want to encourage you to encourage you that in the Bible, this picture of slavery, being a slave in, in, in Exodus and other chapters, we can see that in the New Testament, Jesus Christ said, I came not to serve, uh, not to be served, but to serve to others and to give his life as a ransom for many. 
Jesus Christ came to die on the cross for our sins because the sins that we are practicing, the life that we are living without God, enslaved us. Today, there is a lot of good advertisements. Like I remember in those days when I was a student, there was advertisement of the cigarettes, like a taste of freedom, just try. <laughs> and there is a lot of messages around us that say, hey, you want to be free, just try this. Just do this. And, and slowly we became the slaves of the things. And we are slaves of our sins. We are slaves of our bad habits. And Christ came here to, to give us a freedom, to forgive our sins and to give you freedom that you can have relationship with him and that you can live a life for God. Amen. And, 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 and I want to invite you this morning, if you uh, are still thinking about that, God is calling you, give life to Jesus, uh, consider him, repent for your sins, admit that you cannot help yourself and ask Christ to, to, to forgive your sins and to give you grace and mercy. He can change your life. He can take you from captivity to the freedom. Amen. But unfortunately, sometimes Christian people knows everything about that, but still we are in some slavery. Still we need to shake the dust and walk. Uh, I know sometimes a lot of Christian people don't believe God, don't read the Bible, don't trust God's promises, and they are stuck. They are stuck in their spiritual progress. They are like a dog who is running for his tail, going in a circle. The same problems, the same obstacles for last 10, 15 years. God wants you to be free. God has a good news for you as a Christian, as a believer. Shake up your dust. Take off your chains and go. Be holy and go. Put trust in Him. He is a faithful God. Put trust and believe in His word. Amen. God is calling us how to respond to the word. He's, he, he's calling them in a few sentences here. He said, uh, put trust in me. Put trust in, in my word. Uh, God is opening our ears to listen and read his word. We are so privileged to have a Bible today. If you lived a thousand years before, <laughs> you will not have a Bible like you have now. Yeah. And people who translate the Bible, <clears throat> many of them lost their head. Because there was a spiritual battle. And I was reading, I think it was a Tyndale or, or a John Wycliffe. Uh, no, John Wycliffe was, but also Tyndale who translated the Bible in English and uh, later in, uh, in, in Dutch and other. A lot of people were against that. Organized religion was against that. Uh, uh, the word of God is powerful. Uh, without errancy, we believe that the word of God is truth. Amen. And the word God has a power to transform people's lives. The Jeremiah said in one prophecy, the word of God is like a hammer which is breaking every strong stone. Sometimes in our lives we have <clears throat> some strong things which are slaved us. And God wants to use his word when we read, when we study, when we put in a practice to destroy the strongholds in our lives and in our, in our behavior. <clears throat> there is a good, this is a good verse in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, 50 chapter 10. He said, listen, people, put God's instruction into your heart. Listen, people, put God's instruction in your heart. Uh, uh, he's also, also <clears throat> in, 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 in verse 10, he said, who among you feared the Lord? Who obeys the voice of his servant? God is calling his people to, to, to show trust and respect to God. Today, I'm afraid sometimes in the churches, we lost the fear from God. Yeah, we are just, oh, God is our friend, good. You know, and then there is no fear of God. There is no respect over God. And then, oh, God is full of grace. He will forgive me. He's a good grandfather who went to see his children playing, etc., etc. Uh, but God is also a judge. God is a serious God. Uh, 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 Proverbs 9, 10. Fear, fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When we read His Word, when we take His Word 
in our heart, in our thinking, we know God better and we then show him more respect. And out of this respect, we have a good, positive fear of him. Not because we are afraid of him, but because we have respect, uh, fear and respect toward God and his commandments and his word. Who among you fears the Lord? The one who obeys the voice of his servant. Do you listen God's word? Do you put God's words in obedience in your life? That's a good question that we can know. Today, a lot of people want to talk about doctrines, Bible, and that's important. But when we come to the question of obedience, how to put that in a practice, then we lost ourselves in that direction. In a, in a 51, 7, 8, he said, Hear me, you who know what is right, you people who have taken my instruction to the heart. Do not fear reproach of any more mortals or be terrified of their insults. For the moth will eat them like a garment. The worm will devour them in the wool. But my righteousness will last forever. My salvation through all generation will last forever. Amen. He is challenging them not only to hear the word. He said instructions are coming from me. You are hearing that. But put that into your heart. Put that into your heart. That's the reason why it's important why we are talking here. Read, study Bible. Read, study Bible. Put that into your heart. Amen. Uh, uh, we need to first think about that. And somebody said this is the longest way between mind and the heart. <laughs> you know, we need to put here to put the, our mind is like a, like a land. You are putting seeds. You're putting because our mind is bombarded during the day. A lot of bad news, a lot of prediction, a lot of, and then we don't have a place for word of God. Read, study, take the word of God, put that word of God into your heart. When we believe in God's salvation, when we believe in the gospel, when we accept it, then God. Will, will remind us of redemption and salvation that he is providing through his Jesus, through his Savior. And that will bring, there are some results that will bring everlasting joy, gladness, hope in your life. Sometimes when we don't read the Bible, when we don't trust God, when we trust our philosophy and things what other people tell to us, mortals, sometimes we are afraid of the mortals and his Tell them, hey, why are you a friend of the people? If you fear God, you will not be fear of the people and their threats. Yeah? But then, the, the, this is the fruits of the Spirit. Fruits of the, when we put trust in God and His words. Everlasting joy, hope, thankfulness, and gladness. He's mentioned these three things. Sometimes I know in my life, I don't have joy because some small things I, I didn't get my toys. <laughs> I wanted some toy and I didn't get and I, ah, I'm not, you know, gladness. I'm not thankful that I finished university, that I finished many things, that God gave me a good family. I'm not thankful about anything, you know. And then there is no joy. There is no joy in our life because we are worrying too much what other people will say instead of thinking what God is saying. God is providing to the people of Israel good news. He said, those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And the sorrow and sighting will flee away. Even I am who comforts them. Who are you that you fear more mortals, human beings who are like a grass? Do you want to have a Christian life like this? Do you want to, when you wake up, that you can sing and be full of joy and gladness, you know? That is what God wants for his people. He's promising freedom and hope of the world. Uh, later in, uh, in uh, 51, 14 and 15, he said, The covering prisoners will be set free. They will not die in their dungeon. Not they will lack bread. For I am the Lord your God who steers the up the seas and the ways. The Lord Almighty is his name. Amen. This is a good message that they will be free, that God will take care of them, 
that they will not die. And it's a good message for them. It's a good message for us as well. Through Christ and through His grace, we can live a joyful life. We can be a people of hope. We can be a people who are bringing the good news. God wants to use me and you. But sometimes I see myself, I am in a dungeon. Sometimes I see myself, God released me from the prison and I said, oh, but I want to go back there. <laughs> you know, I want to go. God give me a new shirt, but I want the old one with a lot of holes. You know, God wants to leave us a life in abundance. John 10, 10. 51, 16, he said, I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I who sit in a heaven's place, who lay down the foundation of the world and who say to Zion, you are my people. It's a great encouragement. It's a great encouragement for us. We are God's people. You, God paid for us. <laughs> we belong to him. And not only did he give us the word, the instruction, which is coming from him. God breathed. It's a God's word. It's not human words. He opened our ears that we can listen. He wants us to put that into our heart. To transform us. The word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit can transform our hearts, our lives. But also he's calling us to put, he's putting that words, his words into our mouth. To share that with others. To talk with other people around ourselves who needs God. What is the lesson for all of us this morning? What is the challenge? God's word is trustworthy. God is powerful and faithful. Be thankful for the Bible. That's the first thing I want to remind us, all of us. Study, eat the word of God daily. Amen? Uh, uh, in Australia, I saw the students in a uh, student movements, they have like a t-shirt. Maybe we can make like, like a small man uh, with a fork and the knife and uh, instead on the plate. And there is a Bible on the plate and it's re writing on the t-shirt, real food, <laughs> like real food. <laughs> and it's a challenge for students to eat daily. We worry every day about everything, but we need to eat healthy spiritual food. Amen. And sometimes there is a challenge for a lot of people today that we like to read the books, to listen to this preacher. To, that's okay. But we need to read Bible first. Bible is foundation uh, uh, that we need to go into the study. And then if we have a time, go read the commentaries and other books. Amen. God gave us his word as instruction to know him, to live and, and to base our life, our decisions. We are challenged to put the word of God into the practice. There is good words from Ezra 7.10. Ezra was a good example. He said, for Ezra set his heart to study the law of the Lord, to do it, and to teach his statutes and rules to Israel. Ezra have a three relationship over the word of God. He was studying with a full heart the word of God. He put that into his practice, into his heart, life, and he was teaching Others. This is the free relationship toward the Bible, toward the good news, toward the word of God. Study, live, speak. <laughs> that's that's the, 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 the process. Because sometimes if I don't study the word of God, know what God is talking to me, it's a life God, uh, my life can be weak. And then I will not be motivated to do any evangelism or to speak to people. Even if I speak to people, we will say, oh, in your life, we don't see that. <laughs> there is no powerful testimony in your life. Christ is the living word. He is the logos. The world, the word which became a flesh, as John once said. It's a good text. While I was preparing this sermon, the, the word awake Wake up, listen. And I think this is the words that we need to take serious as a church. I want to challenge all of us. Church, brother and sister, wake up. Awake. Listen. Pay attention. Redemption and salvation is only in Christ. Amen? Christ can give you forgiveness. Christ can give you hope. Christ can give you joy. Christ can give you a gladness. You can be a free, transformed by Jesus Christ, by his 
gospel. Amen. Christ provided for us eternal salvation. Eternal salvation. Uh, Jesus Christ told to his apostle, don't be joyful because you saw some miracles. I'm paraphrasing. But be joyful because your names are in the book of life. And when we understand that we are saved by God's grace, that we have eternal life, that we will spend eternity with him, with that kind of eternal perspective, all of the problems that we are struggling are becoming small, not big, because our God is bigger than any problem. Amen? Sometimes I know, like, we are searching for jobs, uh, a lot of questions, financial, future, and some of you don't know where you will go, what is your next country, but, but focus on eternal salvation. We have eternal home. We will spend that with God and Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is that servant. And he said in Matthew 11, 27, 30, he said, All things have committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. To those who whom the Son chooses to reveal himself. He said, he's giving his credentials in this verse. He said, hey, pay attention. Who am I? I'm sent by God. I'm the God, the Son, in the Holy Trinity. And then he's giving this invitation. And this invitation I want to give to you this morning. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in the heart, and you will find the rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are you burdened? Are you tired? Are you like enslaved? God wants to call you this morning. Shake the dust. Stand up. Wake, follow Jesus, take his burden, take his burden, which is light, take his yoke, follow him, and your life will be joyful, your life will be fulfilled, your life will be full of God's power in the midst of problems and issues that you are going maybe through your life. Nobody, nobody spoke like Christ. When Christ was on the earth, he spoke the word of God. In, the, in John 7, 49, the, the, the people who came to arrest Jesus, they said to Pharisees, no one ever spoke like this man. In Matthew 7, 29, when Jesus has finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed by his teaching because he thought as one who had authority, not like they're the teachers of the Lord. Pay attention to the word of God, brothers and sisters. We're living in a world which is full of false information. Take the word of God seriously. Respect God. And also be obedient. We need to put that in a practice. Sometimes it's very hard in a culture than we live. People will think we're crazy. People will think that we belong in the 16th century. <laughs> but we want to be obedient to the word of God. Because we love him. He loves us. He revealed himself to us. Jesus Christ, he said, the person who is listening these words and not putting that in practice, he's building the house on sand, not the house of the rock. So we need to take that seriously. Be joyful and glad. Shake off your dust. Raise up. You are a free person. You have a free to have relationship with God. But as Apostle Paul said in Galatians 5, he said, don't misuse your freedom to be enslaved in a sin again. <laughs> you are free, but you are free to serve him and give him a glory. Jesus Christ said, if you abide in my word, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you abide in the word, if you are in Jesus' word, if you are having relationship with God uh, through his word and prayer then this true is setting us free from the lot of things that is uh, blocking our spiritual growth. And Jesus said to them, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The word of God is the lamp to our feet, uh, David said in his psalm. Study the word and his promises. Fear from the Lord 
Put that in a practice. Be obedient. And God will give you joy, hope, eternal life. You will be free to serve him. Everything will not be like you will not see obstacles in every situation. You will see opportunities to serve God. And the th third thing, share this word with others. Share the good news with others. Bring the good news about the peace, about the message, about that God wants to be the Lord of our life. Our God reigns. Go into the world and make all with all nations disciples. We have opportunity to share this good news with other people. May God bless us. Like people of Israel, they needed to hear this message because they were full of fear. They were full of in slavery. But God wants to open their horizons. And I want to give a, two invitations. If you're not Christian yet, please come and I would like to talk with you. And I would like to introduce the way how you can start a relationship with God through Christ. God loves you and he wants to forgive your sins in the past. He wants to give you power of Holy Spirit in the presence and he wants to give you hope for the future. But if you're a Christian and you accepted Christ and you got baptized and you're coming in church, but for the years you are enslaved with some problem, maybe this morning God is calling you to ask for help. To say, God, I heard this morning I want to be free. Pray this morning from your place and ask God, give me a freedom. I want to shake the dust and go. I want to go. I want to know, uh, proclaim that you reigns. The Lord reigns forever. Let's stand up. <clears throat> and I will invite worship team to, to, to lead us. But uh, this is the good news. God wants us to be free. And God wants to, us to, to, to be in close relationship with him through his word. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity that we could remind ourselves through your word that you provided eternal salvation, that you provided redemption, that you provided the freedom for us. Thank you, Lord, that you saved us and gave us that freedom. But God, we are asking from you that you will give us discipline that we pay attention to your word daily that we study that we put your word in our hearts that we can be obedient to the word to trust your promises to trust your word more than what people mortals around ourselves are talking to us help us god and give us a power of your holy spirit that we can break the chains of some slavery that is blocking our spiritual progress and maturity. I'm asking for every of us here, Lord, that you will speak to us and open our eyes that we can see that areas in our lives which you need to be the Lord. You need to be the Lord of every sphere and every area of our life. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, who paid that ransom that we can be free. And thank you that... Jesus Christ rose from the dead that he is giving us eternal salvation and eternal life through him alone. Thank you, God. We are praying this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.